Corey, welcome to CNN. Uh, a lot of things to ask you about tonight, but first I want to ask some questions about you, questions our viewers uh, will have. You are now a contributor for us here. Uh, you and I have done many interviews uh, with you as a campaign manager. Now you're a contributor. Did you sign a non-disclosure agreement when you worked for the Trump campaign? So when I came on the campaign, thanks, thanks first and foremost for having me on, and it's a pleasure to be with you tonight. You know, when I came on board the Trump campaign, uh, like everybody else, I said what I would do is keep confidential information confidential, and, and I signed a document to that degree, and, and I don't plan on ever breaking that. My confidentiality agreement is such where information that I'd be privy to and private conversations that take place between family members that are not meant for the public audience are going to be held in the closest and strictest of confidence with me. And I think that's my duty and my obligation, not just as someone who signed a document, but more importantly, as a person who has respect for the individual he worked for. So yeah. I, I will tell you that I'm not here to release private information of family members or discussions that took place behind the scenes that the public really has no reason to be aware of. Right. Okay. So private conversations, but but also just in terms of whether you're going to be able to say what you really think. I mean, the agreement that CNN obtained that Trump employees sign says something a little bit more specific than what you just said, Corey. It said during the term of your service and at all times thereafter, you hereby promise and agree not to demean or disparage publicly the company, Mr. Trump, any Trump company, any family member, or any family member company. Um, did you sign something like that that said no disparaging? Let me tell you who I am, and for those who don't know me, I'm a guy who calls balls and strikes. I'm going to tell it like it is, because uh, that's how I've you know, had my entire career. And most of the time, it's been at my own detriment. Uh, people who know me know I'm a very straightforward person. I'll tell you exactly like it is, whether you like it or not. And you know, maybe that's the reason I don't have some of the jobs I should have had or been given some of those opportunities, because I'm a straightforward person. That's not going to change. No matter what I've done or what I've said, if something is wrong, I'm going to tell people it's wrong. If something's right, I'm going to tell people it's right. So there's nothing that's going to stop me from telling the truth, in my opinion, regardless of what that is. And even I think that's what the people expect, and that's what people Donald deserve. Trump, right. The bottom line that the viewers want to know is even when it's saying something bad about Donald Trump. Look, I'm going, to, I'm going to say it like it is. If I agree, if I disagree, I'm going to come out and tell you this is right, this is wrong, this is my opinion on things. And I think that's what the people have a right to have. My opinion on what I believe is right and wrong doesn't mean you have to agree with me, but I am going to tell you what I think for sure. All right, so let me give you a chance to do that right now, Corey, for, for our viewers. Uh, the Washington Post is reporting a new company called Left Hand Enterprises. It was formed in April. It got two big payments, uh, about three quarters of a million dollars from the Trump campaign, and it got it in just a few days. That was means it went from not existing to getting three quarters of a million dollars in money in, in just a few days. It was the, in the top 10 biggest vendors to the Trump campaign. And of course, Corey, as you know, this is a campaign that as of the latest filings had only $1.3 million cash on hand this month, right? So we're talking half of that would be going to one vendor. What is this company? What did it do for the campaign? Can you tell us? Well, so the company was listed as a direct mail expense. And that company was supposed to be doing direct mail in the states of Nebraska and Indiana. And I, let me tell you this, and I'm not trying to pass the buck, but I can tell you that if there is anything that uh, has not been appropriate, Mr. Trump will find it and fix it. And I can tell you that this campaign that I have no longer, that I'm no longer part of, but I was very diligent in watching where that money was spent. And I can tell you that every vendor knows that we deserve, that Mr. Trump would get the best price, the best rate, and whatever may be on left-hand enterprise, whatever their job is supposed to have been done, was done effectively and efficiently. And if it wasn't, we'll make sure that the money's returned properly. So. Were you responsible then for left-hand enterprises? I, I was not responsible for that. That came out of a separate budget, which I didn't have under my purview. But let me tell you this. I can tell you, because I've worked there for an extended period of time, that every dime that goes out of that building uh, through that campaign is scrutinized and looked at and vetted. And I would be sure right now, based on the story that The Washington Post is reporting, is that there is an internal audit taking place right now to ensure that every dime was spent properly. And Donald Trump is the only person who does this. To watches, he watches this money because it's mm -hmm. been his money for so long, and that's what he would do with the federal government as well. So, Corey, just to be clear, so I understand, uh, you're saying that you know that it was for direct mail. Obviously, it's a huge amount of money, uh, especially for two states. Indiana, obviously, is significant when Nebraska, uh, less so in the process. But if it wasn't under pur your purview, whose was it under? At that time, Paul Manafort, who would just have come in? That's right. There were two separate budgets in the campaign, and this was uh, the direct obligation of, you know, it, this did not fall into my purview. This was done under the state operations budget, of which was uh, held and responsible through another party and not mine. So just to be clear, I am certain that 
the money was spent wisely. It was spent to the, in the best accord with what the campaign standards are, but it wasn't something I was directly responsible for. All right. In the three days since you uh, were fired, Corey, uh, well, three and a half, right? It, it was obviously sudden on Monday morning. The Trump family has said some really flattering things about you. Here's a brief snippet for people who haven't caught it all. I think Corey is terrific. I watched him before. He was terrific toward me. Corey is an amazing guy. I mean, we have a great relationship with Corey. All right. Corey, you, you have been pretty honest about this and that you did not see your firing coming. You were on a conference call on Monday morning. You walked into a room. It happened. You've had a few days now to sit, to go home, to see your family. Do you feel angry? I don't. I feel honored. I feel honored to have been part of changing the American political system for the rest of our lives and hopefully so much further. And, and the Trump family has been so good to me and my family and so generous that it's been so humbling to know that for a small period of time I had a small role in helping with this campaign and the generosity that they have showed me and, and the kindness that they brought me in and let me into to their family and to their hearts and to their lives to give me the privilege of running a presidential campaign it's been a great experience for me, and I have no ill will. As a matter of fact, I, I, would, I would go back and do it exactly the same way, only better. And if I did something to disappoint the family and I didn't accomplish what they needed, then they do what they need to do because the campaign is bigger than Corey Lewandowski. It's about changing the direction of our country. And if that means the only way to get Donald Trump elected president is that I'm not part of the campaign anymore, sure, that's tough. But you know what? Sometimes it's tough, and you have to be tough to get the results that you need, that this country needs. And I am fully committed in my private time with my family and my friends of telling everybody that I know that Donald Trump is the only person who's going to save this country for my children and hopefully Sir their children someday. All right, certainly. And so, you know, it's been, it's been a great privilege. All right, certainly no disparaging there. Let me ask you something, Corey. When you left, you just heard Donald Trump this morning uh, talking to Hugh Hewitt on the radio saying, he, you know, whether it was possible he might come out early with what his potential cabinet picks might be. Obviously, you have to have a VP before you have any of that. Uh, when, when you left this week, did he have a VP in mind? Well, the, the list uh, when I left was very, very short. It was ongoing conversations. The individuals who he is talking to about being part of that process have all agreed that they want to be part of that process. And look, there's been some speculation out there that you know people don't want to be part of this. It's absolutely the opposite. Every person that he has talked to, every person that he has had an interest in talking to has reaffirmed with 100% certainty that they would be absolutely welcome on the ticket. They want to do this. These are individuals who are of the highest quality that are ready and able to serve in a capacity. Should they be part of the ticket that gets elected, they'd be ready to go on day one. There's no so, on-the-job training here, and these people would be ready to go and are, and are excited about the prospect of being on the ticket with Mr. Trump. All right, so, Corey, how short is that list? You say short list. What does that mean when it comes down to it? I'm not asking you for names. You're not going to give them, but, I mean, is it three? Is it four? Is it two? How long is the list? It's no more than four right now. It's no more than four individuals right now, and these are the absolute very best, the, the, the people that everyone will know, their household names, their people that he has said will help him achieve his legislative agenda, people who are going to be very, very happy when he finally makes the determination of which one of those he's going to select. So, Corey, let me ask you one more thing about how he handles himself uh, in public. He was asked in an interview today, as you saw on NBC with Lester Holt, about Hillary Clinton's emails. Uh, he said her use of a private server enabled uh, foreign governments to hack her emails. He said it uh, in a speech uh, just obviously yesterday, and now uh, Lester Holt asked him about it. Here's the key exchange. But is there any evidence that it was hacked other than uh, routine phishing I think attacks? I read that and I heard it, and somebody Where? that also gave me that information, I will report back to you. I'll give it to you. Should he stop making this allegation without proof, Corey? At this point, there is, let's just be clear, there is no proof. Here's the issue we have with the email server, right? This was hiding in someone's bathroom in some location, was held off-site. Hillary Clinton has admitted she's made a massive mistake on this. It's, it's, as you know, there's hundreds of FBI agents looking into this. She's clearly committed a crime against our country. She doesn't want to admit it. There's 33 or emails or so that are still classified that were on that server that should never have been. The real but question Corey, is, the real question is, the is hold on, hold on, but the, the real right question thing? is, the well, real question is, did a foreign government hack it? There's no proof. That, that's what he specifically alleged in the speech, what he uh, well, here, alleged what again to know. Lester What Holt. we do know is that we, we do know that a foreign government hacked the DNC's email system. We know that for sure. That's unequivocal, and they've admitted to that. What we don't know is that did they also hack 
to Hillary Clinton. We're not, he, we don't right, know so, if it's so, been so hacked. Who, it's so very possible what, it has You're because, giving him advice now. You're not his campaign manager anymore, but would you tell him to stop saying things that he does not know to be true? No, what, what, I, what I think you have to do is you have to raise an issue because there's a serious question about the security of those emails. What we know is that there are classified documents on those emails for sure. We know that unequivocally because the U.S. Senate has those emails and they're under a classified briefing right now, so the American people can't have those. The State Department continues not to release all of the emails because they're classified. And the fact that these were in an unsecured location is a crime. And the fact is the federal government should be prosecuting Hillary Clinton for this crime, and they've chosen not to do it. That's what the root of this is all about. Right. Well, the root of it is, of course, she has been charged with nothing at this point, and there has been no evidence of proof. Uh, well, she, in she terms. has, and that, that's a failure of our government is the problem. That's a failure of our government because if it wasn't Hillary Clinton, if it was you or I using a private server to store classified materials, you and I would both be charged by now. All right, Corey, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time.